Researchers say a meltdown of the number two reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi plant could have been avoided if cooling water had been injected four hours earlier. Fuel meltdowns occurred at the plant's number one, two, and three reactors. It has been estimated that most of the environmental contamination was the result of an explosion at the number two reactor. Researchers at the Japan Atomic Energy Agency created a computer simulation of the number two reactor to see if its meltdown could have been prevented. The plant operator began manually pumping cooling water into the number two reactor at around 8 p.m. on March 14th. The following day, the reactor overheated and a hydrogen explosion occurred. The first simulation examined what would happen if the water injection had started two hours earlier. It shows the temperature of nuclear fuels dropping for a short while, but then rising again. Once the fuel temperature exceeds 1200 degrees Celsius, a meltdown will occur. In this case, the water level in the reactor was already too low to prevent it from overheating. In a second simulation, water injection began four hours earlier. At first, the temperature rises, but then begins to fall before it reaches 1,200 degrees. The agency has concluded that the meltdown could have been prevented if cooling water was pumped into the number two reactor four hours earlier. <laughs> The cooling operation faced a lot of difficulties. However, considering there was enough time to spare, it is necessary to look into why it took such a long time to begin pumping water into the reactor. TEPCO says it doesn't believe that emergency operations were significantly delayed. Officials added that workers did their best amid high radiation levels and other severe conditions. A concern about internal radiation exposure is mounting among people who live near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. A city in Fukushima Prefecture has decided to help worried parents by offering radiation tests for infants and small children. Parts of Minamisoma City were designated as evacuation zones following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The city has been testing residents for internal radiation exposure since July, but infants and small children were excluded as the equipment did not fit them. A city-run general hospital and a Tokyo-based medical firm came up with a method for measuring radioactive substances in urine. The hospital began accepting applications on Thursday. The test will be provided free of charge for children aged six or younger. Results will be mailed about two weeks after the samples are received. I've been worried because no tests were available. I want to know if my child is safe. I want infants to be tested as well. I hope this will help to ease parents' concerns. At least four workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have failed to evacuate, even though their radiation monitor indicated levels of beta rays exceeding the set limit. This is the latest in a series of accidental radiation exposures at the plant. The workers were replacing equipment in the wastewater processing system on Wednesday. The beta ray counter indicated levels above the evacuation benchmark of 5 millisieverts per hour but the workers did not evacuate and continued the repairs. The four were apparently exposed to a maximum of 9.5 millisieverts, a level believed to pose no immediate health risks. Beta rays do not easily penetrate the skin. The government standard for exposure to beta rays in emergencies is 1,000 millisieverts per hour. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, is investigating why the workers failed to leave, despite hearing an alarm. TEPCO has also begun checking 17 other people who were working nearby for exposure to beta rays. Late last month, two plant workers were exposed to high levels of beta rays. In another incident, two workers were contaminated when they were accidentally sprayed with radioactive wastewater. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun injecting water directly into num reactor number two of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant where the temperature is still over 100 degrees Celsius. That's higher than the plant's other two ruined reactors. TEPCO, operator of the plant, has been spraying water continuously into the three reactors. As of 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the bottom of the number two reactor was 114 degrees Celsius, 
compared to 85 degrees in reactor 1 and 101 degrees in reactor 3. Engineers believe the injected water is not cooling the spot where the melted fuel has fallen. TEPCO is using pipes above the likely location of the fuel to spray water. This method was used successfully in the number 3 reactor. The utility hopes to achieve a cold shutdown by January with the temperatures in the three reactors kept stable and below 100 degrees. The International Atomic Energy Agency has condemned North Korea for posing a threat through nuclear proliferation. The regular board meeting of the IEA in Vienna discussed a report about the North's nuclear development on Wednesday. The report says that Libya had procured uranium material from the black market and that the material is likely to have come from North Korea. It says Libya had the substance until the country declared that it was abandoning its nuclear ambition. The report also says that a facility in Syria may have been built with the aid of North Korea. The facility appeared to house a reactor. Israeli warplanes destroyed it in an air attack four years ago. At the board meeting, Japan, the U.S. and others expressed concerns over the possibility of nuclear technology spilling from North Korea into other countries. In a chair statement, the IEA condemned North Korea for threatening the international nuclear nonproliferation scheme.